So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to continue laying up glass on, the, on the, the side that we laid up this first piece on. And the first piece, or the first layer that we put down was a, a layer of chop strand matting, 1.5 ounce. So now the, the next piece I'm going to put down is going to be a, a layer of the 1708. This is going to add a lot of strength and it's also going to provide some bulk so that I, you know, when overall I'm going to have to lay up less laminate. Now the, the 1708 is essentially like three layers in one because it's, you've got one, there are three layers, you know, put on top of each other. You've got one layer running this way, another runner, or another layer running this way at 90 degrees, and then both of those are laminated or I guess stitched onto a really thin chop strand uh, backer. So three layers in one, so uh, that's what we're going to be going with for this next layer, and then we'll be finishing off with chop strand matting from there on out. And I'll lay the, the, the 1708 kind of over the area that, I'm, uh, that I need to cut out here, and I'll just kind of guess it. And I'll take a magic marker and just roughly guess kind of where, that, uh, where this pattern is. And that looks good. And I should say that because we're using a laminating resin, even though this is somewhat tacked up, because it's laminating resin, I don't need to sand it. I don't need to clean it. It's ready to go. Um, one of the big, big advantages of using a laminating resin is that if you're able to, to stick with the project you know, and stay on it during that day, it really, really cuts down the amount of prep work that you have to do unnecessarily. So, and again, anytime we lay down glass, you always want to wet the surface with the resin first, lay down your material, and then wet the material out. We can lay this on right here thick just to wet the surface, and whatever uh, doesn't get soaked up in the first layer will get soaked up in the second layer. So I'm going to lay this down with the, uh, the chop strand side of this, uh, of this 1708, with the chop side down. Throw some more resin on here. And you've, you've heard me talk before about not wanting to have a resin rich layup. You don't want to have too much on here because that'll uh, give you a brittle, a brittle laminate. Well, by putting it on heavy here, on my next coat, put that in place. I'm not going to lay any resin down. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what's called a fin roller. And I'm going to go over top of this with the fin roller and any excess resin that's on here right now will get pushed up and absorbed into the glass as well as work out all of the bubbles, any air bubbles that are trapped in between these two laminates. And also by rolling it like this, if there is, any, if there is too much resin in here for the glass to, uh, to absorb, it all just gets rolled off to the edges and out. So it doesn't get trapped in the laminate. And then you can, if you want, you can just leave it. If it's going to be on, a, uh, you know, on the side that's not going to be visible when everything is all said and done. Or you can, you can sand it off. All right, well, one of the tricks with really anything is knowing when, uh, when, knowing when to call it quits. <laughs> so, Right now, this, uh, this looks perfect. You don't mess with perfection, it's just, it's good. So I'm gonna flip this panel over, and while this is curing, I'm going to lay up all the glass on the other side. Now, what I'm gonna, the first layer I'm gonna put down on this side is gonna be, again, one layer of chop strand matting, one layer of the 1708, and then two layers of the chop strand matting again, and then that should give me my finished finished surface. I 
I've got, all, this is all the glass we need to lay up. In total, we've put one, two, three, four, eight layers, well, four layers per side. So eight total, that is going to be a very, very strong laminate. Right now, what I'm going to do is because uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this tack up before we put any kind of a, or any kind of a, I guess, a finishing surface on here so that all this polyester resin fully cures. So I've got some time to kill. So in the meantime, I'm going to go over how to, real quickly, how to clean these, uh, these little fin rollers because you've got to keep them clean, really clean. So let's, uh, let's go over that. All right, now for cleaning these little fin rollers, what the first thing that I'll do after I'm done using it, and certainly <laughs> before it cures on here, if these things, if the resin cures on here, well, don't let it cure on here, because <laughs> you'll probably be replacing it. But I'll take a little bit of acetone, and I've already cleaned out my cup that we had the, uh, the poly resin in. And let's put a little bit in there. And then drop it in there for, I'll let it soak for, I don't know, five minutes or so. And because I don't want to sit here and wait for five minutes, on the end of these, these rollers come apart. And I'm going to walk up so you can see this here. But if you look on the very tip or on the very end of this, there's a little straight-headed screw. And you can unscrew this, and this whole fin will pop right off. Make sure you don't lose the, this little keeper screw thing. Otherwise, you'll be. <laughs> so that just pops off. I'll drop that in the bucket. This whole fin slides off. Drop that in the bucket. And then now, oops, oops. And grab some paper towel. Put a little bit on here. And just you know, clean this off, wipe it off. Make sure you get all the resin off of uh, any of the threads that were on the end here. Any glass that got wrapped around this part of the handle, just get it off, you know, clean it up as best you can. Get as much of this stuff off. Because whatever you don't get off, it's stuck there. <laughs> it ain't gonna come off. So, gotten that. Now well, again, we'll take our little fin roller and grab another piece of paper towel. And just twist it around, clean it off. It's not difficult, but it's very important. You got to do it. Don't worry about being a little overboard with the acetone. I don't think there's any such thing. But do make sure you're wearing gloves. You, know, you don't want to get, uh, you don't ever want to be hand or getting acetone on your bare skin. It's just not good for you. There, this is looking pretty good. So we'll reach in, grab our little keeper, or the little nut, make sure we don't lose that, take off my gloves because they're starting to melt, and we put it back together. Um, there is one side of this uh, fin roller that needs to go in first, it's the skinny end I believe, well, let's find out. Yeah. The smaller hole, or the smaller end of this fin, goes on to the, the frame first, and then this little screw dealy gets put back on and tightened up. Not tight, just snug. I mean, barely snug. You don't want to over tighten this. 
I mean, this frame, at least this one, is made out of aluminum. If, we, if you over tighten this, you're just going to strip the threads. So snug, but not tight. And that's it. That's all there's to it. Now it's clean, ready to go, and it will not cause you any problems next time you need it. All right, so now the glass has set up. I mean, it's hard and it feels like it's cured, but it is not cured. Uh, remember, we're working with polyester resin, and unless polyester is somehow sealed from the air, it doesn't fully cure. If we were to try to come in and sand this, it would turn into a gummy mess. If we tried and sand this tomorrow, it would be a gummy mess. Same thing two, three days from now. It just, it wouldn't be cured. This very top layer would always be just a little soft, a little sticky, which is why it's called a <laughs> laminating resin. So in order, for, in order for this to fully cure, we need to put something on here so that it kind of seals this top layer away from the air. You can do that in a number of different ways. If, uh, if you have it available, you can take some gel coat and throw in some wax additive with the gel coat and just paint gel coat right on top of here because it really doesn't matter what you put on here because most of this is just going to get sanded right back off tomorrow or for the next episode. <laughs> uh, so you could use gel coat with some wax additive. You could also just take the, the same laminating resin that we've been using, throw in a little bit of wax additive with that, and then recoat all of this. That'll, that'll work just fine. Uh, you can come over with a product, it's, well, it, it's called PVA. I believe it stands for polyvinyl alcohol, polyvinyl acetate. I think it's polyvinyl alcohol. And this, the stuff that I, that I have is green. I mean, it doesn't matter, it comes in purple too. <laughs> but essentially what this is, is kind of a, like a, a, a liquid sprayable plastic. And you just basically come over and give, uh, give both sides a light misting with, uh, with this PVA that and that creates the air tight, the air seal, the, the air barrier and then your, uh, your resin will fully cure. Now with, uh, when you're doing this, you don't want to lay it on heavy. You don't want to see any runs. You, you just want to give it a nice light misting till you can just barely see the color, which is green, <laughs> where you can just barely see the color uh, you know, on the surface. And what works really well for spraying this, I, you know, I, I use these little purveyors. There is a dis disposable, it kind of a crappy one, but for something like this, it's perfect. But it's just like a little disposable spray gun, more or less. And, you know, in a pinch, you can use it for spraying gel coats. You don't ever use it for spraying paints. But for something like this, where it, it doesn't matter if it looks good, all it needs to do is just coat the surface. Perfect. And we're done. <laughs> well, at least for tonight. Well, that's the end of this episode. And in the next show, we're going to cover fairing in the surface on that panel and then starting our gel coat color matching. Now, if you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss that part. And make sure to check out some of our other videos. We got 30, 30 some videos out now, and almost all of them are about boats. So there's a lot of good content there. Also, at the end, after every episode, on my website, bulwarkstoday.com, I post the, uh, the, the video as well as I include some extra information in the description of the video that I'm not able to include in, in this. Uh, it's information that had to be edited out for just for length, you know, time, uh, time reasons, and also just things that I just I <laughs> forgot to mention. So head over to our, to our website, check that out, as well as check out my Facebook page and like the page. Uh, that's more of my, my daily stuff, and there's also extra content there as well. So I will see you next time, and have a great night. We'll see you soon.